Hey, I'm Andrea. I'm a physicist at Los Alamos National Lab. And today we're going to talk about how to detect science BS. And this is really important because not all headlines are created equal. So here are some headlines you might have seen in the news. You know, ripples in space time. Have we found aliens? Could there be a planet nine? I'm going to try to give you the intuition to be able to tell which of these is BS and which isn't. As a disclaimer, I have been giving this talk since 2016, and a lot of these slides are from 2016, so if the memes are outdated, that's why. And so this is a retro talk. So we saw some headlines, and now I'm going to tell you some of the different ways you can react. If it's BS, you might be kind of skeptical, of course. If it's maybe BS, you know, it's it's not bad. It's something you probably want to follow up on in a couple of years to see the status of the experiment. Finally, there are some experimental results that are absolutely mind-blowing that change everything about how we understand the universe and how we explore the universe. Here are three articles from the New York Times, and I will tell you that one of these is BS, one of these is maybe BS, and one of these is almost definitely not BS. And so let's take a look at our headlines. Gamma rays may be clue on dark matter. Ninth planet may exist. Gravitational waves detected. So all of these are really cool. These are all published in the New York Times. So you might think that these headlines are created equal, but remember, not all headlines are created equal. So first, let's talk a little bit about why these different headlines are interesting. And so the first one we're going to talk about is the gravitational waves being detected. And so here is the data from LIGO, an experiment that has two detectors, one in Louisiana and one in Washington. And what they saw was a ringing. And that ringing came from two black holes merging into one. And when that happens, you get this ripple in space time. And so it's that ripple that LIGO says they detected. Our second article is about there possibly being a ninth planet out beyond Pluto. The evidence for this ninth planet comes from the orbits of these objects in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a bunch of icy bodies beyond Neptune. Pluto is one of these objects. And so I'm going to get on my soapbox about Pluto being a planet. If we had Pluto classified as a planet, then these icy bodies that are also in the Kuiper Belt would have to be classified as planets. And so personally, I would rather have Pluto named a dwarf planet as opposed to having to memorize 100,000 new names of planets. So the orbits of some of these icy bodies out in the Kuiper Belt seem to be skewed in such a way that they're being affected by the gravity of something 10 times the mass of Earth. That might be a ninth planet out beyond Neptune. Our final article is gamma rays may be clue on dark matter. This is actually what I specialize in, so I'm gonna talk about this one a bit. Dark matter particles, if they are particles, can interact with each other and make gamma rays, very high energy light. And so we can look for gamma rays from dark matter rich targets. So this was looking at gamma rays from Reticulum 2, a new galaxy discovered. Here, white means more gamma rays, yellow means some gamma rays, and the black means no gamma rays. So you can see there is a hot spot that lines up with this new galaxy. Now, all of these seem really cool, and it would be amazing if they were real. One is BS, one is maybe BS, and one is almost certainly not BS. How can we tell which headline is BS or not? I'm afraid we need to use math. I promise, though, there are no equations in this talk, so do not panic. The math is quite complicated, but we're not going to get into the details. I'm just going to try to give you a feel for what different numbers mean. One of the numbers we can calculate is called a statistical significance. So this is a number that quantifies if it's a signal or noise, a background fluctuation. When I say signal, think of scanning a radio for a new station. So you have noise like what we have on the bottom here, and that's just static. It's not music. And you can keep scanning through the different radio frequencies until you find a signal, until you find a station that's actually playing music. 
music. So we can see that the top example is different than the noise. It has that ringing at the end. And we can quantify this with math. The statistical significance tells us the probability that the signal is special versus just random noise. The higher the significance, the more likely that it's actually a signal and not noise. To quantify statistical significance, we use sigmas. And so those are just named after the Greek letter sigma. The higher the sigma, the more likely it is to be signal. The lower the sigma, the more likely it is to be noise. We have several thresholds that we use in particle physics that I point out here. Two sigma we would call a hint, three sigma we call evidence, and five sigma we call discovery. And so two to five sigma, that might not seem like that's a big jump, but it really is. And so let's get a feel for sigmas by playing the physics lottery. Woo! Remember, this slide was made in 2016. And so here is the Doge from 2016 before cryptocurrency. Back when the Doge was just a cute little dog with some funny words on it. And so we're gonna have the Doge be our host for the physics lottery. This is gonna be somewhat different and a little simplified compared to the actual lottery. What we do is we're gonna pick seven numbers from zero to nine, and we need to get all seven correct in a row. So we have 10 options for each of our seven numbers. So I'm going to pick these numbers, which are the first seven digits of pi because I'm a nerd. All right, let's go ahead. Doge, give us our first number. Oh, yay, it's a three. That's our number. Three is one in 10 because we had 10 numbers we could pick from. And one in 10 corresponds to about 1.6 sigma. It's exciting we got this number, but we probably aren't going to put our phone down and start paying attention to the TV. All right, Doge, let's get our second number. Hooray, we got it again. So that's one in 100 chance of happening. And that corresponds to just over 2.5 sigma. Let's get the third number. Hooray, we got it again. This is just over three sigma, a one in a thousand chance. Now, one in a thousand might seem very, very unlikely. However, it's only getting these three numbers. How sure are you that we're gonna get the next four? Are you gonna call your boss and say, hey, I won the physics lottery, I'm gonna quit my job? No, although at this point you might put your phone down. So three sigma is our threshold for what we call evidence. When you hear a particle physicist say the word evidence, they mean that it is three sigma or higher. All right, let's get our fourth number. Yay, we got it again. That's one in 10,000, and that is just shy of four sigma. Next number. That's one in 100,000, which is about 4.5 sigma. Next number. All right, man, we are doing great. We are just shy of five sigma. That's one in a million. Next number. Hooray, we won the physics lottery. We got all seven in a row. That was a one in 10 million chance. And that is our threshold for discovery. Remember, three sigma was one in a thousand. Five sigma is one in 10 million. Big difference between a hint and a discovery. Big difference between three sigma and five sigma. Another way we can look at this is take an actual lottery, the Powerball from 2016, and we can look at the prize value and we look at the odds. And we can convert those odds to sigmas like we were doing for the physics lottery. The sigmas are listed here corresponding to the different odds. Let's look at two sigma. Remember, that was our threshold for a hint. Two Sigma is like winning $4 in the Powerball. Good for you. We're happy you got your money back, but you know, you're probably not even going to call and tell your mom about this. We go up just a little bit to almost four Sigma. That's a hundred dollars. So that's like winning bar trivia, but are you going to quit your job? No. And then let's go up to five Sigma. Five Sigma is like winning a million dollars in the Powerball. And this again is our threshold for discovery. So let's see where our three articles lie in the Powerball odds. Discovery of gravitational waves. This was a five sigma discovery. This was a million dollar discovery. It was huge. It is very likely not BS and it gives us a new way to look at the universe and we can actually see these small ripples from black holes merging together. It's so exciting. This is mind blowing. The evidence for Planet Nine existing beyond Neptune is something about the four sigma level. And again, that corresponds to $100. So this is something that we should keep an eye on. And I actually checked to see what the status of it is now. And because this would be so far away and so faint, you need a lot of observations to see it. And so they still are doing observations searching for this. So this one is not bad. 
finally, we have the gamma rays coming from dark matter. This was a two sigma result. This was a $4 result. And remember, all three of these were in the New York Times. This one in particular, you should be very skeptical of because it's probably BS. We're gonna talk about that third result a little bit more because this is something that I do. I actually wrote the paper that argued this is not statistically significant. I use data from the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. And so this is a map of the sky in gamma rays. Gamma rays are a million to a billion times more energetic than the light that we can see with our eyes. So you take all that energy and pack it into one light particle, pack it into a photon and you get a gamma ray. Gamma rays are coming from the most extreme awesome processes in the universe we're talking pulsars we're talking black holes and you can see here our galactic plane it's kind of fuzzy in some places that's where particles that have really high energy are interacting with each other and then you see these speckles these hot spots above and below the galactic plane these are mostly distant galaxies now dark matter clumps kind of like galaxies actually galaxies exist within dark matter clumps so you can say okay i know where there's a dark matter clump is there a hot spot there we discovered this new galaxy called reticulum 2 and reticulum 2 lives about over here. It's not pointing to an obvious hotspot, but let's zoom in. This was the figure from the New York Times article, obvious hotspot, but this is super zoomed in. Let's zoom out just a little bit. This is the figure from my paper. When you zoom out, you can see that there is a hotspot, kind of, in that box. It's about a two sigma hotspot. And you can also see that there's a bunch of two sigma hotspots all over this region of the sky. Now, the one in the center is special because it lines up with reticulum too, but you should ask the question, what are the other two sigmas? And again, two sigma is like winning $4 in the Powerball. So you should be very, very skeptical of this result. Okay, we talked about statistical significance. Now we're gonna talk about another thing that you need to calculate when you do your statistics, and that is called a trials factor. And in order to explain it, we're going to use Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This is a book, and it's also been made into two movies, one with Gene Wilder and one with Johnny Depp. And if you're going to pick one of these movies to watch, do not watch the Johnny Depp one. I'm sorry, Johnny Depp, but Gene Wilder is just way better. And if you haven't seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, pause this, go do that, and then come back. The plot point of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is that no one's allowed in the factory. It's very mysterious. And Willy Wonka is this very eccentric, weird person that no one knows. So he put these golden tickets in five of millions of chocolate bars that went all over the world. And if you won a golden ticket, you could get a tour of the factory. So everyone was really excited about the golden tickets. The chance of finding a ticket in any chocolate bar is about five sigma. Charlie Bucket here is our protagonist, and Charlie gets a golden ticket. We're all very excited because he's a nice kid and we want nothing but good things for him. But how many candy bars did he open? How many candy bars you open is called a trials factor. It's called a trial. Now, Charlie only bought one candy bar, so he was very unlikely to find a golden ticket. Now, we're gonna talk about another character, and if you've seen the movie, you probably know who I'm about to talk about. Veruca Salt. Now, Veruca Salt is a brat whose parents are very, very rich. Her parents were able to buy millions of candy bars and hire people to open them 24 hours a day. So her number of trials was millions. So she did, she gets a golden ticket. That's a five sigma, but with how many candy bars? The fact that she looked in millions of candy bars for a ticket means it was almost certain she was going to find one. So here a five sigma is actually not that special. So I just wanna end by saying again, caution, not all headlines are created equal. And just a reminder, you wanna know how many trials, how many candy bars did that person buy? If you look all over the place, you will almost certainly see something quote unquote significant, but it's likely BS. Thank you. Be sure to check out my physics snippets. They are all less than one minute, and it's a cool physics fact that I give you every day. It's part of this channel, so check them out. And if you want to hear more, go hit subscribe.